We live on a beautiful planet, one that is always in flux, but now it is changing faster than ever. Average temperatures have risen rapidly since the Industrial Revolution, and more than 97% of climate scientists agree that greenhouse gas emissions are the culprit. We're pumping a huge amount of greenhouse gases, particularly CO2, into the atmosphere. And if you want to have an analog that tells you something of how the Earth system reacts to rapid changes, you have to go back a very long time. Paleoclimatologists look into Earth's past for clues about our future by investigating the relationship between CO2 and temperature throughout Earth's history, they can better predict the warming trend for decades to come. We have made some major advances over the last couple of decades. We have much higher resolution records now with many more data. And there will be many more data collected in the future so that we can actually get a more complete picture of how carbon dioxide has changed over time and how the climate has changed over those time periods. Paleoclimatologists worldwide are compiling and sharing their best CO2 data on an online portal. But to access periods when the planet was as warm or warmer than today, they have to look beyond the records that can be measured directly. So we can get samples of CO2 out of cores of ice, and those get us back hundreds of thousands of years. But beyond that, when we go to millions and tens of millions of years, we just don't have samples. So we have to measure something else that we can translate into CO2 concentrations. That something else is called a proxy, a measurable biological or geochemical surrogate for past environmental conditions that can no longer be measured directly. We have to rely on things that used to live and they left a trace. Some of these compounds are very hardy and they don't degrade for tens of millions of years. And if you have the right tools to look at them, we can let them tell us what happened in the past. Dozens of proxies exist in different archives, from fossilized leaves and minerals left behind in soils and lakes, to shells of ancient plankton. Each proxy works differently and has a different level of certainty or range of error. Proxies are not perfect, but if they give the same answer, scientists can be more confident that they truly captured the past. And so it is important that in moving forward, the various groups that are interested in reconstructing atmospheric CO2, that we work together to normalize the way that we are collecting data so that we can readily compare our information and from those easy comparisons, try and have a consensus about how atmospheric CO2 has changed and how it has affected conditions on the exterior of the Earth. The Paleo CO2 Initiative assimilates the data generated by individual research teams, and the online platform allows scientists to submit new data, compare results, and extract data for further analysis. The more tools we have to look at the same symptom, the more accurate the reading. I think this is just an amazing effort and I really hope that lots of people will engage with this and that this will become a self-sustaining enterprise that we can all work together to make this a complete record.